Then next I am going to talk about the pemphigoid group of disorders, the classic being bullous pemphigoid. And bullous pemphigoid is also the most common seen pemphigoid group of disorders. In bullous pemphigoid, the target antigens are BP230 and BP180 which are present in the basement membrane. BP230 is also known as BPAG1 and BP180 is also known as BPAG2. And because there are autoantibodies targeted against these antigens, this leads to separation of the epidermis from the underlying basement membrane zone which leads to the formation of a sub-epidermal blister. The blisters in comparison to pemphigus are often tense. While in pemphigus we see flaccid blisters, in bullous pemphigoid we see tense blisters. And this is a key differentiating feature between both. In bullous pemphigoid, the disease often begins with a prodrome. There is an articarial rash, itching and this prodrome can vary from person to person and it varies from patient to and then often when we see patient in a prodrome, we cannot diagnose it as a bullous pemphigoid and it often leads to misdiagnosis. We might think of it as an urticaria or some other uh, clinical symptom. So in bullous pemphigoid, there are tense blisters which can be present anywhere on the body. They might be symmetrically distributed and the mucosal involvement is rare. And these blisters often um, have clear fluid between them and they hardly rupture by themselves. And in bullous pemphigoid, the Nikolsky sign is negative. The quality of life, although is impaired, even though the general condition is better, the quality of life in the patient is still impaired and it causes severe kind of mental stress to the patient. If left untreated, the bullous pemphigoid has a chronic remitting and relapsing course. And bullous pemphigoid is also, even though the mortality of bullous pemphigoid is less, it is associated with severe morbidity. And the treatment of bullous pemphigoid is same as in pemphigus where we treat with corticosteroids, we can treat with immunosuppressants. In histopathologically, in bullous pemphigoid, we see a sub-epidermal blister rather than an intraepidermal blister and the blister cavity has eosinophils and neutrophils. There is also perivascular inflammatory infiltrate with eosinophils and neutrophils. When we do an immunofluorescence, there is a linear pattern of IgG which is present along the basement membrane zone. There is also a, very rarely we can see IgM and C3 reactants. In order to differentiate bullous pemphigoid from other uh, disorders such as epidermolysis bullosa acquisita, there is another, there is a technique that we can do is called a salt split technique. So basically we uh, keep the specimen in sodium chloride. And then we see where, where the antigens are tagged, either to the epidermal side or the dermal side of the basement membrane zone. So based on this, we can differentiate if it's bullous pemphigoid from other immunobullous disorders.